Welcome to the New to Wrestling Podcast, where I, your host, Xavier Cruz, a lifelong wrestling fan, will take a lifelong friend through the action, the joys, and the drama of the world of professional wrestling. My co-host, Kelsey Silva, has been bitten by the wrestling bug, and I want to invite you to join us as I take her through the moments that made me a fan. So if you're new to wrestling and would like to get brought up to speed, or a fan who would like to relive some classic matches, promos, and segments through fresh eyes, join us as we embark on a journey through the Attitude Era and beyond. Welcome to the New to Wrestling Podcast. Hello, and welcome to another edition of the New to Wrestling Podcast. My name is Xavier Cruz. I'm joined, as always, by our co-host, Kelsey Silva. Mm -hmm. Um, How you doing? (laughs) <laughs> good how are you i'm doing well um so we just finished watching the july 22nd 1996 episode of monday night raw this episode is immediately following the uh international incident pay-per-view that we just watched on the last episode um and this one was at a violent clip it was <laughs> a lot happening um so as far as the the show card goes we had the goon versus mark (laughs) miro we had freddie joe floyd versus mankind we had gold dust with marlena versus barry horowitz and we (laughs) had the tag team championships on the line um the smoking guns were defending against Shawn michaels and ahmed johnson um let's just get into it there was Um, a lot so from the jump we have this little like birthday kind of segment um where we have sunny coming down the ramp with a birthday cake like for Shawn michaels that stop and shop sheet cake with the the icing balloons (laughs) just unbelievable the the most generic um so she (laughs) rolls it down um sean michaels comes get does his little like entrance they like he's like is this for me like acting all like surprised they have a little bit of like of a back and forth sunny obviously ends up wearing the cake Mm -hmm. um and sean michaels then gets his you know gets his little two cents his little on sunny once again um so which weird. i mean I, I guess happy birthday to him uh, which by um, the way that means Shawn michaels is a leo which explains everything about him like everything <laughs> made sense to me after that click 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 right into place in my brain 100 percent. um for those of you watching at home kelsey is also a leo so yes yeah so we're all about the drama girl okay the costumes the lighting the pyrotechnics we're all about it so if uh, if anybody was confused um <laughs> if, if anybody kn- is gonna know best it's going you to be never Kelsey. will be from now on you will now know no 100 in the memory banks in your mental rolodex 100 percent. you'll never forget me um <laughs> so um which i thought we were going to just get right into the match but we ended up just having just kind of a slip and slide of like icing kind of all over the place something yeah. apparently happened with Billy Gunn, um, where they had to like push the match like later. I think it was more just to like have the segment in the beginning and then allow them to get clean so that they could actually wrestle mm. um, like later on, which is you know it's fine. Um, so that that's how the the night started. Um, and then we get into the first match, which is the Goon versus Mark Miro, and the Goon is literally just a hockey player, like he's wrestling in like what i what looks like full hockey pads um yes like he had the you know which little... seems unfair i'm not gonna lie like why right? does he get pads that's what i'm saying nobody else gets pads. <laughs> um he had like the full of little like shorty shorts the mm-hmm. with the like the pads like like go up over your like your hips even they're like his, pantaloons like, even or... his like shoes fully looked like they were just like skates minus the skate the blades yeah um, they, like, like they, they were like blades off pointed and then like i was like that doesn't look like easy to like run around in no he almost had like a wedge and i was like let me tell you like wedges went out of style for a reason they're very uncomfortable to wear let alone have an entire wrestling match yeah so um it was the first time i've seen the goon um it was I can't imagine we're going to see much of him. Um, there wasn't a lot memorable um, other than he was just a hockey player, period. He was on brand, though. He had, like, every... He had the hair, the the fit, the shoes, the everything. And, like, I wrote down 
flipping the gloves off in the beginning kind of iconic because literally i said at like right before it happened i was like is he gonna wrestle with those gloves on and then he literally in one move like just like like, hockey fights like yeah i was like whoa i was like honestly (laughs) kind of iconic i'm not gonna lie pretty impressive Um, so like good on him um but during that match we had on commentary stone cold steve austin who the night prior at the pay-per-view had a match with uh, Mark Miro and he was just in rare form talking mm-hmm. about just opening up cans of whoop ass just getting getting things done um, of course just busting Vince McMahon's balls which is just a prelude of the next two years to come um, I really can't wait for McMahon's like village and village and villain origin story to like really take off like i'm really looking forward to that because doesn't he go through like a major so yeah so eventually he's gonna like remove himself from being on a commentator commentary. yeah commentary and he becomes like the wwe's like biggest villain Uh, i literally cannot wait to see that because he's such a like a like captain morals right now right Right, exactly. Which is like, just, don't like, talk he, about her like that. Like he's so like, yeah, like you're like, you're like righteous uncle. Like, and you're just like, yes. I, didn't, I didn't ask for this. I um, yeah. No, but yeah, he his villain story really is really one for the books. I can't so wait. It's something to look forward to. Um, we also during this match had a phone call with Jake the Snake Roberts. <laughs> which who, I knew would be juicy. Which of course, be- because knowing the parties involved, we knew exactly how this was going to go. Jake the Snake Roberts has been out on like injury for the last like couple weeks. So they like call him up just to see like how he's doing and of course jerry the king lawler had not helped himself this man didn't miss a beat to just start he what i have written down that he was like oh what are, what are you like sick with like bar barthritis like oh. <laughs> <laughs> i was just like sure um sure. and then he pulls out a uh, a bottle of Jim Bean and says that that's Jake the Snake Roberts like tag team partner just being the unrelenting piece of garbage that he <laughs> is <laughs> like just cannot help himself no uh, uh, but my highlight of that match um, my favorite moment is when uh, the goon goes to like like have a like a running start like outside of the ring um and slips on all of the icing that is yes over from the birthday cake in the previous segment and just absolutely eats it into the the steel steel stairs uh like (laughs) and you were like was that supposed i was like no baby i don't that was not supposed to happen and if you looked at the icing on the ground it almost looked like someone tried to clean it with like a broom like there was like minimal effort into the cleaning of the icing and i was like they better get out there with the mop miss thing and clean that up before the next match because that he really ate it and i thought i was like maybe that was a part of like i was like was that a part of like the joke or the skit or something and you're like no he like fully slipped on the icing no yeah because it was just so awkward and you could tell he like tried to catch himself before just absolutely <laughs> nailing oh the like ring God. steps and like there one of them was like one of the commentators maybe it was like jerry but he was just like um oh like he skipped like slipped on the ice i thought like hockey players like weren't supposed to do that and like the other one was just like it's icing and like it was just so stupid <laughs> like, oh my God. i didn't even me. notice that <laughs> that is um, so funny and then we, the next match, we had Freddie Joe Floyd, never heard of before this very moment, no. um, versus your boy, Mankind. Um, I, I can't. <laughs> yeah, I, we are setting up for the, the, um, the Boiler Room Brawl, which is going to happen at SummerSlam and was like officially announced today, like during the show. So that's going to be just absolute mayhem. I'm very excited to um, get to review that one. Um, but we're building up to it. So we have Mankind facing Freddie Joe Floyd, who honestly, if you 
told me that the goon had just took off his <laughs> like his like hockey gear and just put on like a wrestling like you, like a wrestling oh, like tights my God. i would have been none the wiser not none. even a little bit so, oh my god i didn't even think about that now that you said it that is so true <laughs> They had, like, essentially, like, the same haircut. Yeah. They had the same build, from what I, like, could tell. Yeah. And they were both doing, um, they were both jobbing. So I wanted, you kind of mentioned, like, while we were watching the episode, like, who are all of these, like, new people? Are, yeah. Like, people that we've, like, never really seen before. They mm-hmm. are what, are like, is termed in, like, the wrestling business is called, like, jobbers. They're essentially like enhancement talent their job is to make the other person look really good so like do they have a lot of like backstory to them no they're not they're never going to be like the stars of the show Mm. but their job is essentially to just take a beating um because they're either like early on in their careers or like they're just not as like pronounced like wrestlers. So their job is to just make sure that the other person looks like a million bucks. Wow. And since we're like now coming out of one pay-per-view and they announce they're announcing matches for the following pay-per-view, we want the people that are going to be kind of highlighted on the show to look as strong as possible. So that's why oh, okay. um, we kind of had like an episode where it was kind of a lot of jobbers. Uh, Word. that makes a lot more sense to me now because i was like why i was like why is gold dust fighting barry horowitz like how did we get here like he hmm. was literally just fighting the undertaker like i was so confused like how right, we got fully. here fully yeah yeah so but back to the the mankind match uh we had i wanted to comment because this was like the first time they like really got like up in his face like it like there was a lot of close-ups of like mankind's like face and i just wanted to get your kind of just what what is it about this man that's just like is an absolute no for you i don't know what it is he makes my skin crawl which i know is his like obviously that he's he's nailing it then because that's i feel like yeah his whole mo and like i said i don't know if i said it last week but i was like the music that plays when he enters and exits literally sounds like if the elevator from the shining had elevator music like it's just so Mm. creepy right and it just like and the screaming like the high-pitched animal screaming that happens out of nowhere and then he's just like pulling his hair out like i don't know it's literally so jarring because he's so so confusing and so like you just don't know what he's gonna do and like the mandible claw is the most vile horrifying thing i've never seen anyone do to anyone and i'm just i just kept going like get your hand away from his mouth get your hand away from his mouth because and you know it's coming obviously oh yeah because uh freddie joe floyd is not gonna stand a chance against mankind though i do want to have a moment of silence for his boots they were mm, they were beautiful (laughs) um (laughs) That's fantastic. and they were like fabulously powder blue love them but obviously i knew he wasn't gonna win against right. uh mankind but still i was like i just was dreading seeing it because it's so jarring to watch someone a man put like a leather gloved set of fingers in another one's mouth and like i don't know it's and just this time like he did it from like so the uh, rope oh yeah freddie joe floyd was like up on the ropes and he just like shoved his mouth like fingers in his mouth and like pulled him off of the top rope like it It was was so violent far more intense than like it usually is Um, yeah but we're building up to a a not typical like the boiler room brawl is not going to be like a wrestling match like they're not going to be like doing holds. it's a brawl like they're going to be absolutely like beating the holy hell out of each other so you know something to look forward to <laughs> um, all right so next me and my girls the- in the boiler room just watching just- boys fight <laughs> the girls room uh, <laughs> so, like um what you call it so <laughs> oh my god um <laughs> The next match on the card was Goldust versus Barry Horowitz. Um, And during this match, we had um, Brian Pillman on commentary, which Mm -hmm. 
they have not done a very good job of like explaining Brian Pillman because he's injured currently. Mm-hmm. Um, so they just kind of have him doing a lot of like a lot of chit chatting, a lot of chirping, Gabby Gabby. Uh, mm-hmm. But like he's such a, a another like one of those dudes who's just very strange. So like. I don't know. It's just like uh, he just seems like out of place currently because he's yeah. not currently like in a feud with anybody or like doing anything. So I feel like they're just kind of finding ways to just kind of stick him on the show um, to keep him like, you know, pretty relevant. But I don't know. Well, I'm hoping he gets not injured soon so that we can kind of see him because like he's a really good wrestler but you have Mm -hmm. to like kind of know that aspect of him to Mm -hmm. like put up with the crazy right yeah right now it feels a little bit like it's the end of the meeting for like the marketing or the planning team they're like okay is that everything they're like oh what about whatever his name is they're like ah um what if we what if he commentates the uh the gold dust match all right cool put him in like that's kind of what it feels like because it didn't make sense that he was there really right exactly because he's not like gonna he's not feuding with goldust and he's not Uh, he's clearly not feuding with barry yeah he's i think he's probably just feuding with like the voices in his mind um Uh, i was gonna say he's more like he's feuding with himself but and his demons but that's just you know know, here nor there we'll get there eventually um during this match we also had uh mark miro did, did like a little segment where he was, uh-huh. it was it was very much um like a coming to sables like honors uh, yeah yeah exactly um which is you know fine because that's kind of that's the basis of the entire feud is essentially mm. like um and, and i was i literally had to stop myself from being like the only like very interesting thing about mark miro is sable period <laughs> honestly and whoever does his outfits love them too but right, like, like he's really good in the ring but like i have little to no interest in mark miro like 100%. i don't yeah so agree i was like sorry I'm so sorry. sorry um sorry. but yeah so there was just kind of like your standard like don't come after my woman promo um mm-hmm. and she was so, looking like withering and beautiful at his shoulder just like, of course just like oh. Um, (laughs) and so that is going to be leading up to SummerSlam as well, because Goldust is going to be taking on Mark Miro. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of where that's, where they're both going to end up. Um, and then we had a, um, a, like, you know, just another scathing promo from Jim Cornette, um, in regards to Vader, who is going to be challenging Shawn Michaels for the WWF championship at SummerSlam as well um so could I tell you any one single thing that Jim Cornette said no because that man is just the master of taking one really long breath and just going Mm. um that man just is absolutely it has like an uncanny ability to just kind of talk himself like into a stupor like yes. like like he is just does not stop talking long enough to just like i don't know if he ever like knows what the point is mm-hmm. he just is going to just shout long enough until you just like believe him you know what i mean uh, yeah yeah yeah. It, it literally he is a like a triple bypass waiting to happen in my mind because he's just like so i'm like breathe please and like i feel like you're gonna have a heart attack like and he's like sweating <laughs> and like i don't know like i feel like a cardiac episode is about to occur or, like i'm very nervous <laughs> but he's also so good because i'm like i don't know what you're saying but i'm listening Thralled. to you yell it at me yeah <laughs> <laughs> no exactly and i think that's going to be a pretty interesting match um because i just love when Shawn michaels just fights like bigger dudes like i think it's just going to be um it's just going to be a good one you know because yeah vader is very athletic for a big man um and i think that's going to work well with the fact that sean is so athletic um so I, i i'm excited to kind of see where that feud goes um because really, uh, we haven't seen, w- which we talked about last week or the week prior, we haven't seen much of Vader as far as, like, him being, like, an intimidating, like, force. It's really yeah. just been, like, you know, one of the three stooges. And, like, yes. that's, I feel like it's just, that's not his role. Yeah, actually, now that you mentioned, I feel like this is the first time I've seen him, like, by himself. Right. So, 
I mean, I'm excited to see that kind of unfold. All right. And now we are at the main event. So we had the Smoking Guns, Billy and Bart Gunn, who also did a promo, which they should have just let Sonny talk. Yeah. Um, because it was like, as soon as they opened their mouth, like it was just giving like himbo. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I was just like, I no longer <laughs> felt that they were threatening. I just kind of felt like they were cronk. No sweat. You're Amber's like, oh, group. okay. Like, right. okay. You're just like, oh, oh, you're just, you're just dumb. You're just I just dumb. wanted to go, who's a good boy? <laughs> exactly so like it just wasn't <laughs> it wasn't the the promo that they probably thought that they were cutting but it's fine oh, yeah. um, <laughs> uh, but good we get try in- boys good try no exactly um but then we get into the match um and it's a lot of you know Shawn michaels in the beginning chasing around sunny we get um a pretty good like back and forth um between like the two teams and this was like kind of the only match that wasn't like a squash match essentially mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. so it was is my favorite match of the night uh, yeah so okay uh because it was just like it was the only one that kind of you didn't really know which way it was like going to go like were they gonna put the tag team titles on on the two of them like in addition to the intercontinental and wwf title mm. Which they've like done with teams like previously, but they just kind of only started teaming like a couple weeks ago, so it would have been a little weird. But yeah, it was it was like a pretty good like decent back and forth. Shawn Michaels is of course phenomenal, just like selling when he's getting like double teamed, and that one like toss into the turnbuckle where he like flips over and like outside. Literally he's just insane. so good at it. Like, it. It looks like he's like in a car crash, like. And you're yeah. just like ah, ah. <laughs> you're just like are you okay i don't think so but like let's keep going but the, what was exciting about this match was um we see the debut of Farouk. that's and, his name yes i um, asked I, I want you guys to know i asked Xavier 70 times who this person was while i was watching cuz i screeched at the top of my lungs like who is this and he was like I, I, i'll tell you i'll tell you eventually so this is huge what um is- so yeah literally your words verbatim were who is the space trojan <laughs> <laughs> i wrote it down because i was so just like what <laughs> but when you look at it it makes absolute like the most sense it he, he's just, if gladiators were happening like in the- in star trek like right it, it would be this man this man would have come out of the woodworks um so yeah so this is the first time we're like gonna see farouk um he's going to play kind of an integral part of a like a faction that's like to come um a faction is just like a a faction yeah just you know just like just a group a little gaggle of wrestlers but this is kind of his this is his like origin story and he gets right into it um with ahmed johnson um and we don't they don't go into it on this like episode but during that, I like attack. Like he seriously injures Ahmed Johnson during. That. Wait, really? So something I don't like. I will figure it out next week. I think for sure. But something like ruptured that like should not have clearly. Like of, an organ. Yes. So he no. had, he ends up getting like rushed to the hospital, um, and has to have like emergency surgery, and like it's like a whole it's a whole thing, um, so. Yeah, it was uh, not, I mean, I'm sure that wasn't how it was supposed to go, but. Is that why it ended the way it did? It ended like randomly, like in the middle of things. Right. So I think because like Shawn Michaels was very like much like standing in between the two of them. And it was, I think he was like trying to cover for the fact that like he was like hurt, hurt on the floor. Um, And if you notice, like there was a bunch of like kind of like older dudes like walking like back from the backstage area like down to down to like where Ahmed was like laying and I think that's because he was like injured so they're trying to like assess like what's up what kind of like help they can get him like how much time they have left on TV so so yeah so he ends up getting like injured and they get into like a 
the feud just gets heated because like now he has like a legitimate reason to be like f this dude like oh, you like put me God. on the shelf oh yeah. my god yeah so that's why the, the ending tea. was like very chaotic because i was way- like w- like that was such a weird way to end it oh my god that's crazy so wait i have a question then do like wrestlers not to be like oh this is insensitive insensitive do they have, like a safe word like how do they so, how do you know like so like- basically it's the referee in the in the referee in the match like essentially like their job is one to like you know make whatever is in the ring look good um and like make the wrestlers like follow rules and blah 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 but they're also like their job is to ensure the safety of like the wrestlers so they are usually hooked up with like an earpiece okay that is hooked up to people in the back um and essentially like you'll see in like wrestling matches if you ever see like a, a referee go like like with an x with their hands Mm -hmm. um that means like someone's hurt like someone's hurt and they need to like figure out an ending for the match like now um so yeah so if you ever like you'll you'll catch it like later on i don't um probably um and there will be specific matches where i'll i'll point it out where i know that wrestlers have been injured um but yeah, so they they'll signal, um, and then they'll like either have to like end the match like then and there, or they'll like come up with like a creative way to end the match. Uh, but yeah, so it, it, it's the referee's kind of responsibility to kind of relay that information, um, Whoa. because you know, I, like as much as it is like I don't want to say like scripted, but like as much as the outcomes are like uh, preordained. There we go. That's the I like yeah. that word. Um, <laughs> you know, they're they're very much putting on like a stunt show and people do get hurt doing stunts yeah it's just something that kind of happens that that's going to kind of start this feud um and that's going to be pretty intense going forward because they are both like big strong dudes like they're I mean, gonna they're, huge. they're gonna yeah they're just gonna they're gonna come at each other with, like battering rams oh so, my god I mean, honestly, if someone ruptured my organ, like it would be, it would be on, bitch. Like on we're, site. we got beef for life. life. <laughs> so, yeah, honestly. Um. So yeah, that's kind of that was this episode, like in a nutshell. Um, we kind of already discussed like our favorite episodes, so we're not even like gonna go there. Um, did you have any other something that like stood out to you that you wanted to like elaborate on? Any questions? I want to mention because I wrote this down because I thought it was. It perfectly describes me also, but like, so Goldust, honestly, and Marlena, like, fascinate me because they're the most bizarre people, like, and I don't understand. And every time he comes out to um, McMahon is like the two most bizarre, like, whatever they say, like, people. I love that Goldust walks out with a wig and then just, like, takes it off. Like, it literally is just for him to walk out. He's wearing, like, a long blonde wig, and then it's, like, wig flown. Then he just, like, gives it to somebody <laughs> and, like, he, like wig flown half the fight. Like, I was like, Ooh. I don't get it. And also the fact that, like, he's painted head to toe gold, but then he takes his wig off and he's just, like, bald and, like, not painted there. It's right. always funny to me. But they said when Goldust was walking out, a lot of theatrics and very little shenanigans. And I was like, <laughs> honestly, put that on my tombstone, except there is a lot of shenanigans. I just pretend there's not. But like, that was so funny to me. Oh, uh, dude. He is, they're just such an so enigma. weird. So uh, weird. And like, it's, he's such a like treat, though, because it's just like, oh, such yeah. A, because like, in this like world, there's like so many people that like, take themselves like so seriously that like it's fun to just like come across a character that is just like ridiculous for the sake of being ridiculous like just yep. somebody who's just sole purpose is to just be like like i'm not like other girls like no, you know? like my whole brand is that i i am the most there is not i am my own specific brand that's never ever existed and no one's ever thought of before right and it's no exactly so um, weird and the fact that he has like a partner in crime like marlena like did they know each other beforehand and they're like hey should we do this together or was it like his idea and she was like willing to get on board like just so oh, they're weird. married they're married in real life yes 
uh, at this point in time or like or they will be i know they they are no longer together but i know Ooh. that they were together at, oh my god like, i love the real life tea also. I, oh me too me I love it. too <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, that was this week's episode. Um, next week is also should be a doozy. We're gonna have uh the Undertaker versus Stone Cold. I cannot, uh, which is the second time we're gonna see that combination. Um, uh, but now Stone Cold is kind of like he's starting to ascend, kind of into more of a main event player. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, we're gonna have Vader versus Mark Miro, which I think will also be pretty interesting. Um. Mm-hmm. Mostly because I want, I'm either interested to see Goldust if he gets involved in that match. Oh, um, okay, yeah. You know what I mean? Because he likes yeah. to play like the little head games. With his uh, little like Destiny's Child, like lose my breath, dust. I fully. Just, <laughs> um, <laughs> so, and then we're gonna have Psycho Sid uh, versus Justin Hawk Bradshaw, which is going to be just I think very just hard hitting. Um, mm. Because, you know, Psycho Sid's a gigantor of a human and Justin Hawk Bradshaw is just like thickums. So like, <laughs> so yeah, so I think that'll be, I, I think it'll be a pretty like interesting episode. I'm, I'm excited to lead up to SummerSlam. Um, that's like one of the big like four pay-per-views uh, that WWE has. I know it's WrestleMania, SummerSlam. Oh, the Royal Rumble and Survivor Series. So they tend to go a little bit more like all out for the bigger four um, than they do for like your regular like monthly uh, pay-per-views. So the fact that they're already announcing matches the day after the previous pay-per-view is like means that they're going to spend a lot of time like building these like feuds up. Oh, very exciting. I love when they, they really just stir the pot. All right, guys. Thank you once again for joining us. We will see you next week with another episode of the New to Wrestling podcast. And that's everything. Have a great week. Bye.